Hi everybody, this is Dan from the House of Broken Dobbs Things, and uh, it's sticker time. I received one in from a channel, Mix Workshop. Now I've been chatting back and forth with Mick um, several times relative to uh, some projects he's worked on. I gotta tell you, he has a very neat workshop. It's jam-packed wall-to-wall. He does a great job visioning what he wants to do and then executing it with, well, excellence. So from that standpoint, I think we're gonna anchor him right up here, right there, up against Nell's mechanical man cave, and then uh, we're adding to that. So again, check out his channel. He's been out there, I believe, I kind of looked back in the archives, a little over a year, maybe two, and you're not gonna you're not gonna regret stopping by. He does some really good stuff. His uh, work on his uh, uh, fluid cooling on his bandsaw was impeccable. So that and his mill and all of the other great stuff he's done, I think you're going to find a very enjoyable channel. So I highly recommend you stopping by. All right, Mick, thank you. And I'll be chatting with you. See you, bye. Today's episode is something a little different. Dan, it's always something different on your channel. Well, I hope so. So from that standpoint, let's uh, get into the subject matter today. Normally, I uh, fix things. House of Broken Dobbs things. Stuff's usually broke. In this case, we built something. We built something to fix something. How's that? In this project, we took the acute sharpening system. We purchased a legitimate pair of set of plans from Accentic Engineering in Australia, and we took a little different spin on it. How different? Pretty different. Let me show you. So I took the plans, which I purchased. They come in either a kit or they come as a uh, completely assembled or you just get the plans. I just bought the plans because, once again, I'm cheap. Within the plans, I spent a good amount of time because part of what I wanted to do was to uh, work on my CAD skills. They're marginal at best and from that one I was also able to take CAD and apply it and then from that standpoint boom I made it. I took the plans from uh, uh, the uh, paper, well, basically paper copies, transferred those into CAD myself and then transferred the CAD directly into plastic. Well, it's orange, and but what does it do? It's meant to sharpen several different things, up to and including end mills, which is pretty cool because I have a drawer full of end mills that need to be sharpened. From that one, just get a quick overview of this one. Uh, it's all plastic with the exception of the fasteners inside. All the threads are plastic. Uh, it's holding up pretty well. My thought on this one was, well, I'm gonna do it like this. The worst that can happen, the worst that can happen is if I make it in metal, I already have a template to measure and have something to cage off of. However, the other thought I had was, you know, when you're grinding and sharpening, there's not a lot of pressure. I mean, if you sharpen drill bits by hand, it's like you're really not a aggressively grabbing it and twisting and shoving. Usually it's a very, very light touch. So structurally, it may not work. I have no idea, but fundamentally it does work. So a couple of key items are, um, this articulating arm right here is pretty cool because this right here, well, let's get a pointing device, Dan. This right here sets the angle of your cut. Well, what do you, what do you mean by the cut? Well, there's a few other pieces I printed as well. This is where your tool is typically going to go. Inside of here, this is just the block itself. It has two pins on it that lock it in different positions. And there's a whole great video out there uh, on this system uh, put out by the designer and the uh, actually the provider of it. Very nice guy named Gary. So from that one, 
you uh, can have any one of the adapters, and these haven't been bored yet, but they will be bored to the size of the end mill. So from that, we'll be able to lock those in, and then there's where a little set screw goes. I just haven't punched it yet because I need to bore the hole first, then do the set screw. And then you drop it in the box, and then this rides on this carriage, okay? All right, that's locked in position. Oh, it's got a lot of flex to it. Yeah, it does. Like I said, it may not even work. However, we were able to build it, and part of that, I've become very familiar with this thing. So from that, this angle can be set. And what's nice about that is, if you take this off, take this loose, take that loose, this assembly comes off. Now, that's a lot easier to look at. You can set the angle of this against your grinding wheel, which will come in either here, and again, there's two different ends. You can set it to two different dimensions of grinding wheels. Whatever you want, you just rotate the table. The grinding wheel will be coming in right about here. And then you set the offset of this housing, and it's gonna maintain that angle no matter where I move this. So from that, I'm able to sharpen pretty much anything I want, maintaining, say, I put a five degree offset. It's gonna hold that. The whole time I'm doing I just push downward pressure and then it's just going to ride right on the table okay from that one um, that's just uh, well I think one example he used was like for a lathe tool okay like you want to cut a 60 degree V fine you just do it like one side set it then you adjust the angle the opposite side and then you basically just go up to your wheel and it's going to maintain that angle that you want because this is going to be offset okay and from there, this comes loose right here. This adjusts anywhere you want on the table. Again, there's more money <laughs> in these handles than there is in the entire thing. Uh, the table itself, if you look at it underneath, it adjusts up and down, fore, aft, twist, angle, so it's highly adjustable. And it's going to mount on something solid that I, then I'll actually clamp it down to the bench and actually move it in and out as I need it. So. From that standpoint, there it is in plastic. A um, couple other things that were there is that when you set your end mill, let's say you take an end mill, oh, let's just make this simple. You take your end mill and you bore it and you set it right here. This six sided is gonna do a three flute or a six flute. If you lock it into position, it's gonna hold it. Whenever you grind to one angle, then you just take this, rotate it to the next one, square it off, go to the next one, and so on. This will do the primary and secondary angles uh, very easily. So the offset of this is typically set to eight degrees, and then there is an additional five degrees, if you can see that in this, depending if you're cutting the, the uh, primary angle, which is the flat side, or you're cutting the secondary angle, which they're adding the five plus the eight to get you like 13 or 14 degrees for that angle. So that's gonna lock in. That's gonna ride right in this carriage depending on what situation you got. Once it's in there, it's in there. And again, I'm not gonna be sitting here moving it this way. I'm gonna be maintaining flush pressure holding this thing down. You may have too much flex, I don't know. I learned how to use CAD better from taking from a blueprint uh, and transitioning it there. No, I didn't go to Thingiverse and get it. And no, I won't give you the plans for this. You can buy them just like I did. It's a $20 bill. It's not a problem, but I think it's a really innovative little design. Uh, it's small, it's light. Um, if you were doing this in metal at home, you wouldn't have a lot invested. Some of the parts are very, very small. Uh, so you will get your, get your dose of tedium in there if you like that kind of a thing. So once you set the end mill in, as I described, here's a setup block that he already gave you the print for it. So you basically, you can lock this down and then you set the one flute and then flip it around and set the opposite flute, just to set the height, okay? That's done. Flutes can come in uh, round, well, the, the hex, the square, and the round. You make all of them. Very simple to print. These are printed 100% infill. So when I bore these, if you're printing and you have uh, a lot of, in, lot of uh, infill, once you get threading or you, <laughs> You're drilling into it it starts crumbling pretty fast so these are 100 percent now i know that you can use additional uh perimeters and that kind of a thing and that's fine i these were pretty small so i just went in and printed them 100 we'll find out how well they bore 
Each one of these will be bored to a unique size for the end mills that I have, and I have a lot. So we'll play around with that one. The downside of this, I don't really see one. It may not work, as I mentioned. However, I think it will probably work well enough, for maybe for me. Maybe I'll learn how to do this. Maybe I won't. But uh, it was a fun project. I was able to put it together over a weekend. And again, that's at my slow CAD speed. I did it in Fusion 360. Wasn't too bad at all. The blueprints are very well laid out, very professional. So if you're looking for that and looking for a project to do, or if you like to do the, if you want to do it in metal, absolutely, you can get there. I just did it in plastic as, well, basically, I like working in plastic. And then uh, I'll have this out in the shop, so we'll just play around with it. Again, worst case, take all this off. Maybe you've got a handy little, you got a handy little grinding stand. Okay, no big deal. Easily can take some of these pieces and remake them. One that's probably going to be remade is this fence. With its dimension, it's a little flexible. Not bad, but it's a little flexible. But again, you're just riding up and down this rail and holding it straight. So again, I don't think it's going to be really bad. This is a stop right here, uh, specific for um, you know your side-to-side -side travel. And there's another little stop I'm not showing, which basically sets the the depth that you can go in and out is a little carriage. It's not in this view. So, okay, that's it from here. I just thought you might think it was interesting or strange to see what I've been working on. Thanks for watching.